Final Fantasy XIV Online has come to Xbox, and with all four of its major expansions also packaged in, this sprawling online RPG is so massive that you might not even know where to begin. But you know what? That's why I'm here, isn't it? Let's get started. First things first, you're going to need someone to play as. Final Fantasy XIV Online's character creator lets you pick your race, gender and clan. This is mostly just an aesthetic choice, but race and clan do also affect your base stats a tiny little bit. Hrothgar have higher strength and vitality, while Duskwai Elizen and Midlander Hure have more intelligence, for example. And while these differences really won't matter in the grand scheme of things, it's sort of worth taking into consideration. Now, the starter class that you choose will have a big effect on your playstyle, but don't sweat that either because Final Fantasy XIV Online is just all about flexibility, and you actually gain the ability to switch class almost immediately. Picking your starter class also means picking your combat role, as the classes are divided into tanks, who lead the charge and soak up enemy fire, healers who keep the rest of the party buffed and healthy, and damage dealers, or DPS as they're known here, who focus on laying the smoke smackdown on your foes. Again, you can eventually play as all three different roles with one character, but you should think carefully about the one you start off as because multiplayer events like Dungeons and Trials, which we'll discuss in more depth in just a bit, will decide who to team you up with based on your role. So let's take a little look at these classes then. Starting with the tank options, the Gladiator is a great choice for new players because their shield and sword combo offers a nice balance of attack and defense while you get to grips with the early bit of the game. But if you're feeling a little bit more brash, then the Marauder is an axe-wielding tank who is slightly more damage-oriented. Okay, moving on to the DPS options. The Archer is a nimble, range-based class who's really good for players that love to duck and dodge. The Pugilist, on the other hand, is all about melee, with some deadly combos and attacks targeting multiple enemies that you can unlock fairly early on. The Lancer is another melee-based option that uses a polearm. It does boast a low damage ranged ability, though, and it gains a really cool jump ability later on, which we'll discuss in the next section. If that all sounds a bit too head-on for your liking, well, the dual dagger-wielding rogue offers a much stealthier option. If you do pick a melee-based DPS, you'll also get to benefit from positionals, which basically means that some of your attacks can do more damage if you hit the enemy from a particular angle, like behind them, for example. Let's chat about the Arcanist. It's a really fun option because while it is a DPS, it also gains access to a healing spell pretty early in the game. When it comes time to pick a job, which we'll also get to talk about in a sec, an Arcanist can be evolved into either a DPS or a healer. So it's a great pick if you want to keep your options open. But best of all, Arcanists can summon pets called Carbuncles to help them out. They're just these dope little rabbit looking things, each of which come with different abilities and effects. The Thaumaturge is a decidedly less beginner-friendly class that specializes in destructive magic, which obviously does sound really sick. While you will really need to get to grips with the game's combat system to fight effectively as a Thaumaturge, you'll unlock some seriously powerful attacks later on. But if you're just one of those kind-hearted souls who wants to start out as a healer, then the Conjurer really is the only way to go. You'll get a really nice array of damaging and healing spells to work with early on, allowing you to just float around the battlefield, helping out your buddies and needling your foes. Still with me? Great, because now it's time to talk about jobs. So once your character hits level 30, you'll get to take your chosen starter class and evolve it into an upgraded version known as a job. Gladiators become paladins, giving them some nice healing and support skills to work with while they swing their sword. Marauders become warriors, hulking brutes with massive axes and support skills that allow them to boost their strength even further to dish out some serious damage. Get your conjurer to level 30 and they'll become a white mage with an array of healing skills to patch up your friends in a variety of ways. On the other hand, a thaumaturge will become a black mage with a bunch of destructive explosive magic at their disposal. Your pugilist will find religion at level 30 and become a monk. Their martial arts based moveset features loads of combo potential and opportunities for positionals, so this is a really great job for players that just really want to clobber their enemies. The Lancer turns into a high flying dragoon, using their pole arm to launch themselves into the air as well as for some seriously meaty attacks. The Rogue becomes a ninja, giving them an arsenal of ninjutsu magic to complement their stealthy skills with. This one really requires some clever comboing to take full advantage of, so it's not the most straightforward, but it is hugely rewarding. 
The Arcanist is perhaps the most interesting of the bunch because you can change it into either a minion conjuring summoner or a fairy toting scholar. Both are a little bit complex because you have to keep an eye on both your character and their companion, but they're great for brewing up some double trouble. Oh, and as for the expansions, all of which are set to be included in the Xbox Series X and S version of the game, they add in even more potential job options, and it's worth reiterating that, unlike a lot of other online RPGs, Final Fantasy XIV will let you switch up your character's class and job as you play. So, don't worry about locking yourself into one particular playstyle. Alright, so now you've got a character, and at least a vague career plan, it's time to take up a quest. And the good news is that Final Fantasy XIV Online has them by the boatload. In fact, you'll be pretty quickly finding yourself being offered so many quests that it can be a little bit confusing. However, the top left corner of the screen always displays your next quest in the main story. And you know what, it's a good idea to focus on these first, since they're one of the fastest ways to level up, and they also unlock loads of other cool features and and classes which make your whole experience that much richer. The icon for main story quests is gold and grey and it's also worth keeping an eye out for the ones that are gold with a green sprout. These are Hall of Novice quests and they're basically tutorial missions designed to help you master the game. The trials you face in the hall are specifically tailored for your combat role so it's a great way to figure out how to effectively play as a tank, a healer or a DPS before you head into a multiplayer scenario and have other players relying on you. And then there are these gold and blue icons, which mark any class or job related quests that you've got available, as well as any that will unlock new features. You don't technically need these to progress through the game, but they are really worth taking the time over. The class quests have to be completed in order to get your hands on a soul crystal or job stone, as it's commonly known, which lets you upgrade your class into a job at level 30. Each class also comes with a unique side story that crops up while doing these quests. But again, it is entirely skippable, but you know what? A lot of players really love them. And finally, there are the good old-fashioned side quests represented by just a plain gold icon with an exclamation point in it. The rewards for these don't tend to be great, so they're definitely skippable, but the stories can be a lot of fun. But one special shout out to one quest that is definitely worth seeking out early on, which is called My Little Chocobo. When you hit level 20, you'll get the chance to join one of the three grand companies. And once you've done that, you can speak to the company commander and receive this quest. If you complete it, you'll unlock your very first Chocobo mount. So cute. Oh, and if you start off in Limsa, another one that's definitely worth looking out for is Like Cats and Dogs, which you'll receive by speaking to Scribbild in Western Lanosia. It's available early in the game, and completing it will grant you the chance to snag an adorable minion. From time to time, you'll also get a notification telling you that a fate or full active time event has opened nearby. Now, these are open world encounters that allow loads of players to pile in and take on a bunch of enemies or one very powerful one. They're a great way to gain XP, especially if you're of a similar level to the fate. And all you have to do is just wander into the radius of the fate shown on your map as a blue circle and start fighting. Obviously, all of Final Fantasy XIV Online's quests can be taken on solo, and you can also take on all of the dungeons and trials from the base game, known as A Realm Reborn, using a feature called Duty Support that lets you team up with certain NPCs to get the job done. However, there are still times when you'll have to tag in other players to see everything that Final Fantasy XIV Online has to offer. First up, dungeons, and they're story-driven missions that take place in a certain area and usually involve loads of bad guys, a few puzzles, and some gnarly boss fights, including a big one right at the end. And if that last part sounds good, then you are gonna love Trials, which are basically extra difficult boss battles that have you and other players teaming up to take on a massive bad guy. These fights also tend to involve special mechanics that you'll need to pay attention to if you wanna succeed. Clear that trial and you'll unlock a hard or extreme version to really put your skills to the test. Finally, raids kick things up a notch by having a whole bunch of players teaming up to take down some particularly deadly foes. Normal raids involve a single 8-player team, while alliance raids feature three different 8-player parties, often giving each group their own set of tasks to complete. You'll also find savage variants of normal raids, which increase the difficulty, but also the rewards. Some of them even drop rare mounts. A Realm Reborn's Alliance raids have to be completed to progress the story, so digging into the multiplayer side of things really is quite important. Okay, okay, I know I said finally, but one last thing. 
After you've played through a few of these cooperative challenges, you're going to gain access to a feature called Roulettes, which allow you to replay them whenever you like. The Roulettes also offer a daily XP boost, and the timer on this resets at 3pm GMT, which is worth planning around if you're trying to level up as fast as possible. Right, now that you've got the basics down, here are a few extra bits of advice for living a happy life in Eorzea. In Final Fantasy XIV Online, as in life, it's important that you remember to eat. Consuming any item of food will grant you the well-fed buff for 30 minutes, increasing your XP intake by 3%. So you should definitely have a munch before beginning a quest or a dungeon. You can even stack two of these buffs and increase the duration to an hour by consuming food twice, but it does have to be the same food item. Buffs like this can also be increased with certain usable items. The Squadron Rationing Manual will add 15 minutes to your meal effect duration, while Free Companies, which are basically Final Fantasy XIV Online's version of guilds, can also offer buffs for food time and all sorts of other things, so it's definitely worth joining one early on. In fact, you can to join R1 at Xbox On if you just jump into our Discord server. Whenever you level up and unlock a new skill, you should head into the Actions and Traits section of the Character menu and read the skill description. You might find that it can be comboed with some of your other skills for better effect. If you don't want to walk everywhere, you should also familiarize yourself with Etherites. These giant crystals basically act as fast travel points, which you can teleport between. You'll find the first one in your starting area, and then there are other etherites to be found all across the land, so make sure to attune to any that you find, and you'll be able to fast travel there too. Uh, for a fee, of course. Nothing in life is free. Once you've attuned to some, you can use the return command to zip back to the crystal you set as your home point in the teleport menu, although this does come with a 15 minute cooldown, but you know what, that's plenty of time to get questing. Cities like Limsa, Gridania, and Uldar contain multiple Aetherite shards, and once you've attuned to them all, you'll also gain access to a few other teleport locations in that area as a little bonus. Plus, teleporting within a city is free. Nice, I guess there are some free things in life. Oh yeah, like we mentioned, another way to speed things up is to snag that aforementioned mount. Mounts become an especially efficient form of transport after you've unlocked the ability to make them fly. This happens once you've completed the level 50 Heavensward main story quest, Divine Intervention. This will reward you with an Aether Compass that helps you find Aether Currents and attune to them. Once you've attuned to all the currents in a given area, you are free to take to the skies. So, go on then, what sort of Final Fantasy are you guys going to be having? Hit the comments to let us know, and we'll see you in Eorzea. Bye!